Madagascar, a magnificent tropical island in the southwestern Indian Ocean, is a biodiverse haven. With over a hundred lemur species, each following unique evolutionary paths, the island is a testament to microendemism. Its tropical and subtropical forests vary from lush and humid evergreen forest in the east to dry in the west, with intriguing spiny forests and thickets in the south. Near the island's second highest mountain, thriving in a humid biome, are captivating ring-tailed lemurs. They adapt with a thicker coat in high elevations. The large rivers that flow from the humid highlands to the estuaries in the southwestern Subarid region served as vital dispersal corridors for these iconic lemurs. Journeying south of the Anila estuary, we find them in the spiny forest of Simanampetsotsa National Park. This challenging habitat receives less than 400 millimeters of rainfall annually. Amidst nature's tapestry stands the grandmother baobab tree, over 1600 years old, symbolizing the island's enduring heritage. North of the Onila estuary lies a narrow coastal strip of dry, spiny forest, home to two endemic bird species. These micro-endemic birds face numerous threats. As we explore this unique ecosystem, we observe the sub-desert mesite, mostly dwelling on the ground. In the early hours, its presence is accompanied by the resonating call of the long-tailed ground roller. However, deforestation and human activities endanger the delicate balance of life on the island. The primary threats encompass extensive deforestation through slash-and-burn farming, the production of wood charcoal, as well as the uncontrolled roaming of livestock and the introduction of invasive species in certain areas. Land grabbing in the subarid region intensifies habitat destruction, exacerbates water scarcity, and strips local communities of their means of sustenance. Urgent action is needed to safeguard the precious ecosystems of Madagascar for the endemic biodiversity and the people. So, Olia, we understand so clearly why these ecosystems are of global importance. And we understand the complex work that still needs to be done to understand them and to conserve them. In order to do that well, what's the kind of support that, that Madagascar National Parks and other types of agencies actually need? Madagascar National Parks manages 2,600,000 hectares, and we have about 600 agents who have to use the equipment. At the moment, we are doing adaptive management so that all managers can alert and see deforestation in these protected areas. But these 600 agents must be equipped. They must also be trained. To protect Madagascar's ecosystems, conservation efforts are crucial. To achieve true efficiency, local communities residing near protected areas require viable alternatives to destructive practices. In order to work hand in hand with these ecosystems, it's about community engagement and community involvement. It's about research and understanding. It's about protection and monitoring. And it's about resources to do all of that together. Well, I hope that we as WRI can be supporting that process even more in the future. While education and awareness are vital, they alone are insufficient. Restoration initiatives play a pivotal role, not only within parks and reserves, but across the entire island. At Simanampetsotsa, it may take more than half a century for nature to recover from the endured disturbances. Actions like removing invasive prickly pears and planting endemic trees, including baobabs, are steps towards restoring the lost balance. While climate change in Madagascar is poorly documented, it remains a real concern. Farmers have already noticed shifts in their cultural calendars, a stark reminder of the need to adapt to changing environmental conditions. In this relative desert of data, the research station in Simanampetsotsa has been diligently collecting information since 2006. So there's still so much left to understand about this landscape and about the biodiversity here. I know that you guys just came through a very severe drought and the rains are back. Is everything back to normal now? From 2006 until now, we clearly observed a change. It looks like we are globally going back to a kind of normal situation. Though it looks normal, but it is not normal. We observe more plants that give flowers, but we do not have fruits afterwards. 
Their efforts provide invaluable insights into the island's ecosystems and aid in formulating effective conservation strategies. What can WRI and its partners do? Forest Watcher speeds up the monitoring process. Field patrols receive near real-time alerts on their cell phones, which allows them to act quickly to fight against potential threats. With the new alert, the patrols are going to the field to proceed with verification. They can continue to support research, promote sustainable practices, and collaborate closely with local communities, empowering them to seek alternative livelihood options beyond solely relying on forests and natural habitats. What we can do more is uh, to provide more capacity building and uh, to also update our tools to, to really uh, answer the needs of the, of the partners. Yeah. We also need to conduct more research on uh, how we can adapt the tools uh, in forest monitoring. Madagascar cradles a treasure trove of biodiversity, a living testament to the marvels of our planet. Let us unite and endeavor to conserve and protect this delicate paradise, ensuring that its beauty flourishes for generations to come.